welcome to another, our first video in abstract algebra uh, we're going to start by looking at basic set theory so the objectives for this video are one to list the subsets of a given set and two to prove that two sets are equal by showing that each is a subset of the other so we start by looking at subsets of a given set so if we have set a with elements 2 4 6 then write all the possible subsets of a now we know that the empty set is a subset of all sets so we have the subset of a containing no elements which is the empty set we also know that we can have subsets that contain only one element so contain each element in the given set so we'll have three subsets containing one element so these subsets would be two four the set containing only the element two the set containing only the element four and the set containing only the element six so the singleton sets now we can also have subsets containing any combination of two of the sub elements so we can have subsets containing two elements and these would be the set containing two and four the set containing two and six and the set containing four and six so those are all subsets containing two elements just a note the set containing four and two so put in the four first is the same as the set containing 2 and 4 alright so we look at all possible combinations that we can have of any two elements next up we move to three elements and this will give us the entire set itself so the subset of A containing three elements is 2, 4, 6 now this is just the set itself and as we know each set is a subset of itself so all possible subsets are listed below and if you count them you would get eight so there are eight subsets of set a now how do we determine the number of subsets now if a set has n elements then it has two to the n subsets now in the previous case our set a it had three elements hence n would be equal to 3 and this means that the number of subsets should be 2 to the third power and remember 2 to the third power is that 2 times 3 it's 2 multiplied by itself 3 times so it will be 2 times 2 times 2 which is 8 and that's what we got when we count them right now how many subsets will the following set have so set B and C so go ahead and try that you can pause the video and try that now B has four elements so it means that B will have two to the four subsets and that is 16 C has two elements so it have it will have two to the two so two squared subsets and that's just four you can go ahead and list all the subsets of B and C we now look at why the null set is a subset of any given set now given two sets a and b we let b be equal to the null or empty set now by definition we know that b will be a subset of a if and only if every element is b in b is also an element in a so that's the definition of subset right now b would not be a subset of a if we have some element in b that is not in a i think we can agree with that However, if you think about it, there are no elements in B. B is just the empty set. This means that there cannot exist an element in B that is not in A. Now, remember, the empty set, like the name suggests, is empty. So that means that we cannot show that it is not a subset of A. And hence, B is a subset of A. So since B is the empty set and A was some arbitrary set, then the empty set must be the subset of all sets. And there we have a little proof as to why the null set is a subset of 
any given set. So here are some tools that you will find handy in and in going forward so what we're going to look at now is we're going to prove that sets are equal to each other by showing that one is a sub that they are both subsets of each other now these tools will be very handy so it would be good if you write um, these off so you can pause the video and write it off we'll proceed so to prove that two sets are equal or one way to prove that two sets are equal is to prove each of the two sets is a subset of the other set so in particular let a and b be subsets of some universal set a is equal to b if and only if a is a subset of b and b is a subset of a so let a and b be subset of some universal set we want to prove that one a minus in bracket a minus b is equal to a intercept b and a minus b is equal to a intercept b complement so let's go so i want to prove that a minus a minus b is equal to a intersect b now recall if x is in c minus d then x is in c and x is not in d and if, it, if x is not in c minus d then x is not in c or x is in d now let x we're going to consider some element x to be so we're going to prove from left to right so we're going to show that a the left hand side is a subset of the right hand side right so we're going to consider some arbitrary element x in the left hand side <coughs> now let x be in a minus a minus b if we look at what we just recalled if x is in c minus d then it means that x is in c and x is not in d so in this case our give me a second in this case our c would be the a part so our c would be here and our d would be all of this here a minus b so it follows that x would be in a and x is not in a minus b in a, a similar reasoning we can say that since x is not in a minus b we have x is in a and x is not in a or x is in b so this here is coming from this part here so we have x we already know that x is in a but the second part is saying that x is not in a or x is in b but we already know that x is in a so it means that x is also in b so it means that this part here would be out because we already know that x is in a so we end up with x is in a and x is in b so it means that x is in a intercept b so x is in the intersection of a and b so there we have shown that the left hand side is a subset of the right hand side now our aim is to show that the right hand side is a subset of the left hand side so we we'll use some arbitrary element y so let y be in a intercept b it means that y is in a and y is in b now we can also write this as saying y is in a and y is not in a minus b so because we know what we're trying to get it to look like we we use our knowledge from here that we had recall in order to write it in this form all right so when solving when, when doing these type of 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 problems it's it's crucial to keep in mind what it is that you're trying to prove so we know that at the end of the day yes we start off with a intercept b but we want to end up with some a minus b so we look at the relationship that we know we look at our our toolkit that was given earlier and we say all right which can i apply to get what i have to look like what i want it to look like 
and this gives us y to be in a minus a minus b and as simple as that we have shown that the right hand side is equal to the left hand side sorry it's a subset rather of the left hand side and since both are subsets of each other we can safely say that they are equal let's look at another problem <coughs> So, A minus B is equal to A intersect B complement. So, once again, let's recall. Now, let X... So, once again, we're going to show that the left-hand side is a subset of the right-hand side. So, let X be in A minus B. It means that X is in A and X is not in B. So, if X is not in B, that means that X will be in what? x is in b complement so we have x is in a and x is in b complement so that means that x is in a intersect b complement so we have shown that the left hand side is a subset of the right hand side now to do the reverse so we consider some y some arbitrary y in the right hand side so y is an element of a intersect b complement this means that y is in A and y is in B complement. Now, if y is in B complement, it means that y is not in B. So, y is in A and y is not in B. And we can look at where we, we, we did the recall and we realize that y would be just in A minus B. So, the first one, yes, look at the first one. You can realize that y is in A minus B. So, therefore, we have the right hand side being a subset of the left hand side and we can say that they are equal since both are subsets of each other we can say that they are equal and we look at another question so another problem where we want to show that these are equal so once again it remains we want to show that the left hand side is equal is a subset of the right hand side and vice versa now once again we start off we consider some arbitrary element x in the left hand side so x is in a union b intersect c so x is in a or x is in b intersect c so we're going to kind of expand that part there x is in b intersect c so what does this mean this means that x is in a or x is in b and x is in c now we can look at this as saying that x is in a or x is in b and x is in a or x is in c and this gives us x to be in a union b intersect a union c and see as simple as that we have shown that the left hand side is a subset of the right hand side we now move to show that the right hand side is a subset of the left hand side so once again we consider some element in the right hand side so this means that y is in a union b and y is in a union c so from this we can say that y is in a or b or y is in a or y is in b and y is in a or y is in c so clearly y will be in a or y will be in both b and c so we can write y is in a and well that should be that should be or rather y is in b intersect c so this this and here should be or Alright, so following from above, R, it should be R. And that's why we end up with the union. Because remember, R is the union. Alright, so there we have Y, I'm sorry, the right hand side is a subset of the left hand side. And since both sides are, are subsets of each other, we can see that they are equal. Now, this brings us to the end of our first video.